Howdy peeps, welcome, welcome back. We've got an interesting one today. Something that a lot of you won't actually be familiar with. And what it is. And it's rather, rather old, interesting building behind me. Reflip the camera screen so I can see somewhat. Let if we come back a little. We can get the wits in. This is one of very few remaining foreigners' lodges. Because where we're standing is in what was Brooklyn's most uh, populous, let's say, rabbit warren. So we'll give you a quick hoofty at the Sign. I will be reading most of this out from um, my notices that we do have. If we look down here, the bit that's left is the middle, which is the original part, and the two wings either side were burnt down in 1935. So, let's get the older notey things out and start reading. So. First of all, it's a scheduled monument, quite understandably, and it is unfortunately in the middle of an area where people do enjoy taking walks with their families and their dogs on a Sunday. We are in the middle of Thetford Forest, so we won't turn around because we've got people that side. But as you see we've got the natural heathland which is how it should be. All sorts of birds, rabbits, foxes, going to be rats, it's Norfolk. But the conifers are actually all human. We put them all in. So this isolated lodge, we're just going to have a wander around the outside looking at the building works was built circa 1400 by the prior of Our Lady's Priory in Thetford, if you remember when we did the tour of Thetford Priory. This was owned by the prior there. Um, the prior had the right of free warren, which means it had a license from the king to hunt small game. Yep, that means rabbits, unfortunately, so bunny lovers, sorry, but it was a big part of the local economy, as this notice board we were about to get to will say. And being such a productive rabbit warren, it was obviously a target for poachers, who in those days and ages would have been armed quite heavily and we're not talking guns we're talking bows arrows swords etc I'll just hold for a bit if you want to pause and read that but the main thing to say is that Breckland by the 18th century was producing 20,000 rabbits a year for meat and fur with the fur being shipped as far afield as South Africa apparently now, there are defensive features to this building that show that the threat was taken seriously of poachers. Um, it's a substantial building and it's in an area where stone and brick were rare and actually rather expensive. So, which shows the wealth and the social standing of the owner, the priory. And the quality of the construction shows that the lodge was intended to house hunting parties as well as the warrener, and who was the prior's gamekeeper. Now, we're back to this old one, and this is going to get old news real fast in these kind of videos. After the dissolution of the monasteries in 1540, yeah. 
the monastic lands were, as we said before, given to the Duke of Norfolk, who was the patron. And this was up in, in use up until the early, early 20th century. And as I said, it's one of the most prolific rabbit warrens in the whole of Breckland. If we look up here, we can see where one of the wings used to be before they went off. Check, but you can actually see the line in the wall. You can see the shape of the gable. That's, this is a rare example, as I've said, and it's actually pretty original. but she's running away and mortared flint as well as that is locally well available you can also see the reused stone around the arrow slits actually designed in such a way or built in such a way as the drain sure that hole but is fairly modern but it's had an iron rod in there to stop people getting in then they figured out if someone can get in something like that they deserve a chance to have a leap for the night um, as, as we say it's a fortified building so the walls at the ground level are up to a metre thick or more which is a little over three feet so you can see by the doorway here and the limestone dressings are reused 12th century architectural pieces so originally the defensive features included parapet so pretty much up there just without the actual crenellations or battlements as it were. There you can see some of the tile. So that the warren, warreners could look out, bring down arrows on the foe, that kind of thing. And so we through the arrow slit windows on the lower level. And inside there are the remains of an internal staircase, two fireplaces and a partial intermediate floor with sluices in the wall. And we have another window. I'm doing a second lap. So I want to show you the sluices. Now I'll leave it up to you to decide because historians aren't sure. Here we have the sluice which leads up to the second floor up there and I'm not sure if I poke the camera up whether it will see anything there we go I'm not sure whether that caught anything or not it might be blocked off and it's black up there now I'm going to leave it up to you as to whether that was for dressing the game up on the second floor and letting the bits you don't want fall down or was it a toilet <laughs> the literal hole in the floor you drop your stuff out of or as I think I suspect is more likely probably both now this building is actually haunted um, the most noted haunting we're catching up with Mary again is of a, a giant white rabbit with glowing red eyes which I'm pretty sure is just going to be a normal everyday white bunny but one of the giant varieties that happen a big white bunny 
that happens to, because it's white, it's an albino, it has red eyes. That's my theory on that. Um, if people had seen that back in the 14th, 15th century and they'd never seen one before, maybe it, it's getting a bit dark. Maybe they've had a couple of uh, meads. These stories tend to get a bit out of hand, don't they? And the other one, the main one that you hear or see, is of a face that gets seen looking out the windows. Which, yeah, okay. A face, woo. Well, anyone can come in and look out the window and get spotted. Well, the only way in, remember, defensive emplacement. But this is obviously a modern addition. And he ain't getting in there. So other things we can notice, as it was, the door would have stood where we are now. And to prevent the door being opened in the case of a, an attack, as we go up through the tile, you see a big hole in the roof arch which does lead all the way up and um, what they could do is drop a stout board or probably half a tree trunk down there and yeah, stop people getting in so if we come around the inside the reason why this has had to be caged off you got people carving their names in the remains of the plaster but yeah, so we've still got like original windows, boards. The roof has been replaced with a modern one. Thankfully they put a skylight in though, so you can still see in here. Come along, more windows. Uh, another window. And down here is the remains of the staircase. Now, I can't actually see through here. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can get the camera through and see what we can see because I can't actually see through brick walls or around corners. So hopefully that's picked up whatever's in there as we try and waggle the camera back through the bars and we'll come back through this side as well. And so when I was saying about the partial intermediate floor, we have two layers down here, so if you excuse the coffee cups and Stella cans, because idiots. So here we have the lower level um, fireplace, as you can see by the, the burnt brick behind it, stone and tile. And then, I'll say this is mainly for keeping you know, the the animals stop or whatever warm and then the one up the top is where any uh, hunting parties would have been and that would be their fire so as you can see a very interesting place now other paranormal things have happened here it is Fairly well known for orb activity, so whether I've caught any on camera, I don't know. I've not seen or felt anything myself. And there's also quite a bit of EVP or electric, electronic voice phenomenon goes on. So you never know, we might have picked up something. Listen close. It might not just be an annoying accent. There are other people wandering about though, so you might just hear them in the background. Anyway, we'll do, because there's other people trying to get in and look around. You know, anywhere that's free these days. <laughs> so, we'll uh, one last scan around the general environ of where we are. So the gorse and all that good stuff. 
Uh, one last scan of the building itself. And we'll do the flippy screen, flip to face, and say, well, there we go. Thetford Warrener's Lodge. I hope you've found it at least partially interesting. If not, I hope it sent you to sleep. So, you know what to do. If you've made it this far, thank you very much. Don't forget, like, subscribe. If you've got anything you want to put in the comments, let me know. Anything I've got wrong or Sharpie, you suck. They might get deleted. I, I do have some ego. Memberships are open. But thanks for watching. Peace out. Rock on. Bye-bye.